kids, welcome back to Roto Talk. Hey kids, welcome back to a happy Thursday. So, um, I found everything cured up real nice. Everything is good to go. I removed 99.100% of the gussets. Uh, they pop right off. Um, I found a fatal flaw. Not a fatal flaw, but a flaw nonetheless. I went to go, this is nice and level, no twist, everything's good. Um, we let our 30 minute epoxy cure up yesterday. Everything's overnight actually, and everything's good. But I went to go made everything up, put the, the bottom on, and it didn't fit. Um, and I'm going to show you what I found. I thought I was losing my mind. I thought, uh oh, I have the rails in upside down, or I did something irreversible, which I did not, thankfully. Um, so this picture on the left is a zoomed in picture of one of the pictures in the manual. Notice that rear slot's wider. Now, the picture to the right is mine before I cut it. Notice how the one on the left is longer than the one on the right? That's why the notch didn't fill. That's okay, it's not a big deal. So, I notched it out a little bit more. We'll putty it up. So, uh, whew, I was sweating it there for a minute. I thought, oh shit, I put my rails, the bottom rails, maybe they were backward. But then I did some math, did some measuring. I'm like, nope, they're exactly where they need to be. So, I don't know, whatever. So the next bit, what we did, the other thing I want you to watch for if you build this kit, and like I said, that is not that old notch is not a deal breaker at all. Um, took me two seconds to fix it. But they don't tell you all the things like in a step-by-step -step manual, like a zip kit. Zip kits is engineered for building fast boats fast. They really are. Um, the gear, the running gear for our um, R4 outrigger should be here today. Thanks, Jeff. Um, and uh, we'll get that one going after next week. Next week I'm offline. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but they tell you how to do everything. Like you've never built a boat before, go out and buy a zip kit so you can build it. it even the, the Thunderboat, which is a, uh, a relatively intricate model, I don't know if I'd do it for your first boat ever, but it's a real easy boat. Um, whereas the, these types of boats, where the ML Boat Works is a good example of this, where they throw you a, a box full of wood and hope for the best, look on forums type of thing. Uh, so the thing I want you to be wary of is they don't tell you, okay, seal this now, glue that now, seal that now. A lot of it's common sense if you've built before. One of the things that we have to do is we have to put another brace on the back here with some support structures and then another laminate over that uh, they did not tell you in the manual to seal this so you have to watch for those blind what we call blind spots or blind corners where it's like oh shit that's you know we need to <laughs> that ain't gonna work main office and tell them what i said ow and wire main office tell them i said ow gotcha uh, because if you wouldn't have sealed this before you put that other outer on, where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. I sealed this one too for good measure. <clears throat> this is going to go on just like that. Okay, and it's going to bow in. Uh, if you would have not sealed these before you did that, bad, bad day at the zoo, right? It's going to rot. You don't want that. So we did that. The next thing we've got to do is we've got to put these uh, support bows in. One's going to go right on top of the struts like that. And the other one's going to go right on top of those struts just like that. Okay. Then they ask you, tell you, to make some wood filler blocks. And those blocks are going to go. Now these aren't pretty. I just whipped them up out of scrap because I didn't have any chunk stuff laying around. These are going to be for hardware like trim tabs and things like that to bite into. All right, <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna mix up some epoxy and we're gonna clamp these guys just evened up, just like that, okay? One is a little bit longer, that's when it goes on the top, okay? And the other one, it goes right to the edge, can't, can't mess it up. And then the other one is going to go right there 
right to the edge. You can't mess it up for the most part. Okay, so I'm going to mix up some just some 10 minute epoxy and uh, we're going to glue these in. But we also have to seal them. These need to be sealed too. I'm going to seal them when we go to put in the other piece though. So for right now, we're just going to epoxy them in. So I'll be right back. There we go. So there's our stop blocks. We'll have to do a teeny, teeny little bit of sanding right here just to make sure it's all flush when we put our bottom on. So there's our hardware blocks our bow plates or bow plates as they are that's gonna make the back bow a little bit and then we're gonna let that cook for a little while and then we'll get her out the box okay we've given her 20 minutes or so which is gonna be plenty yeah good enough to hold it for what we're doing next okay I do want to share one funny thing with the uh, instructions <laughs> you'll get a kick out of the first page Thank you for purchasing this kit. We are sure it will provide you with many hours of enjoyment. That means, does it take many hours to build? I don't know. This kit is not a toy. If boating is fun and a rewarding hobby, but it can be dangerous if not done with common sense and safety in mind. Well, I guess they better repossess this. Never operate your boat alone. Strike four, always carry a fire extinguisher. I do have one right there. But that's okay. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on our rear former. And that is right here, okay? So exhaust side is going to go, in this case on the right, because it's upside down, right? So, fairly simple process. I'm going to real quick sand these ends. And the reason I'm doing that is because I sealed this last night. And I just want to have a little bit better stiction. Okay, stuff this down a little bit. Okay. Now I sealed this side. All right. So now what we're going to do give it a test fit. Make sure everything's copacetic. So far so good. Okay. What we're going to do clamp it. This is just a dry fit for now. Interesting how they did this. I'm not sure I would have designed it this way, but whatever. A lot of work for a, a curvature. See that? See how this is rolling? Interesting. <clears throat> okay. Not my favorite design, I guess. I have to clamp a little crap out of this thing. That's that. Kind of weird. I mean, it'll work. That's fine. And then we're going to cap it with this piece. Okay, that's, I mean, is what it is. Um, and then I will probably fill this with uh, epoxy or fiberglass. Hmm, interesting. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put some 30 weight on here. And, a, well, let's see. Yeah, so to make this simpler, that's what we've got. Okay. Then we'll sand these flush. But what I'll probably end up doing is doing some CA tacking. So it's all going to need to be sanded out to make it look nice. And we're going to take a pencil. Because since this thing's already sealed, there's no point in wasting a ton of epoxy on this thing. I'm only going to 
glue it where I need to glue it. <clears throat> much it. Strange how that works. Okay, whatever. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and epoxy this all up. I'm going to do it off camera because it's going to be, uh, I'm going to have to hang the boat over a certain way. So, I will do it and uh, show you how we did it. Be right back. So, I clamped it at the point i also ca glued it just a touch to make sure these didn't pop out these are a touch uneven but we'll sand them free no problem there and uh i epoxied the crap out of those gaps on the inside i'll give it another coat after that one cures while it's in this position not on the bench because i have these clamps down here we're going to put the chines in very very simple if you did everything right these chines you have to put together they come in two pieces. Now I don't know if this is an international kit uh, for shipping because everything was cut in half, just about. So just CA glue them together. Plenty to do it. And then we, uh, which we already, I think we walked through that. And then I'm going to CA tack them. And if you did everything right, they should line right up. And it's perfect. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to tack it in with just a dot or two of CA on each one. And then I'm going to epoxy both sides. And then we'll be back. Bye. All right, we are back. So here's what I did. What have you done to it? We went ahead and clamped this up. It's still clamped. I'm going to let it cook for a little while. But it's, it's pretty much done. I did add a doubler back here for a little bit of extra support. And then... Um, we added our blocks, and I also thickened epoxy and filled it up in there to give me even more uh, transom support. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do now is we are going, there's a little bit different method. We're going to um, nail down our plate. Okay, first thing we're going to do, our bottom piece, first thing we're going to do is make sure we're level, because we're going to weight it too, but we're doing a different variant here. I'm going to mix up my custom concoction. And this is not straight fiberglass resin. This is fiberglass resin with micro balloons. Hang on. About two ounces, which is going to be more too much, I think. Uh, but we thin it with a little bit of alcohol on top. And then we take some micro balloons. I know it sounds stupid because I'm thinning it and thickening it at the same time, but trust me, it makes it set up better and faster and acts a little bit more like epoxy. Okay. Then. Okay. A little bit too much of that. And then we're going to mix her all up. Trying out my new design here. Make sure we get. I just 3D print these little mixers for fiberglass, are really good, I think. I'm trying it out first time. Along the edges, a little Mix Master stuff. we're good okay let me get rid of this okay get off the coke Whew. now where'd my brush go i had me a brush i already did a dry fit of this so now and this this wood is super porous I mean, super porous. It. I was watching it when I was um, tacking in the chines with CA glue. <laughs> you could just see it wicking right up. So we're going to need a lot. So we're basically going to fiberglass this up. 
which is going to act like our epoxy. Because we have fiberglass inside this boat anyway, per the instructions. Uh, the epoxying is pretty much done. And then, um, so, well, we're sealing and then we're going to nail it down a little bit. I'm probably going to put weights on it anyway, just to make sure we don't have any twist. Because once you put this bottom on and a top, you're locked in. You are locked in. Right now we're not locked in because it's just a skeletal skeletal frame, if you will. <clears throat> My pink diggly diggly here. But this is gonna work real well. I put the I've experimented with this concoction before. With I think it was the cracker box. And it worked really well. And it's much cheaper, much faster. Well, I don't know if it's faster. About the same cure time. Pretty quick. Okay. Then we're gonna line up all these little notches and I'm gonna pound some nails. So I will be right back. Alright, everything's lined up, everything's copacetic. I do need to put a pin in the nose. So I'm using basically this hammer, tiny little hammer, and nails, pins, whatever you want to call them. Now, you want to be able to pull these, you could just, I've never done this method, this is kind of the old school way of doing it, um, but I like it. I've got formers underneath that are big enough, I'm just going to clamp that, I have formers underneath that are big enough you can nail this. Most of the stuff like zip kits and things like that, real narrow, I mean, you have to be a pretty good damn carpenter to do it right. So, I think we're good. If we look underneath, I don't know if you guys can see that, we've got fairly good mate, okay? But I am going to, let's see how good I am. <laughs> I bet I'm not. I'm going to try to hit him in the middle. Actually, if I put it in the middle, though, it's hard to put a weight on there. We're going to grab some weight. Again, this is more for the twisting or anti-twisting than it is for anything else. Don't be afraid to use weight. I've had guys give me shit. Look how much weight you putting on that thing? Enough. Yeah, baby. She good. She good, son. All right, I like it. Then once that's done and cured, we're gonna give it a few hours. We're gonna slap that back piece on. I'm gonna do that tonight. That's gonna to be very simple. We're just gonna take this plate, okay, that I already sealed, which I really didn't have to, come think of it, but whatever. Um, and we're gonna laminate it over the back piece, just with some uh, either fiberglass or 30 weight, you know, 30 minute epoxy. And that's it, clamp it up, leave it sit overnight. Tomorrow, we're gonna to do the banding. Now the banding, or the siding, is the part that scared me. And your suffering will be legendary. I think that's the part that's gonna be a little bit like, either really cool or really hateful. We're gonna find out soon enough. So I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be okay, we'll see. So I'm just gonna leave this thing clamped up and sitting good. And uh, I'm gonna put that back plate on without you. Not hard to do. All we're doing is lining it up. We're going to sand this down, make sure these are good. Well, I barely need it. I need to sand right there. Hit that with the sander real quick. Get some of this epoxy off. And then we're going to just laminate that piece over it. And then we are done. All we got to do is the siding. Then after the siding, um, planking, whatever you want to call it, first stripping, whatever you want to call it, um, then I want to figure out a way to, might use thickened, I haven't decided if I'm going to use thickened fiberglass or thickened epoxy because I want to seal each one, each where the ribs overlap on the inside without it gooing out to the outside. Because that's gonna be a sanding nightmare and because you're gonna be sanding these like shingles, right? This is like a real um, Jersey skiff where they actually, it's plank sided. So every one of these saw blades that you see here, these cuts, a plank goes there. 
So if we get a shit ton of goo in them, it's going to be a real pain in the ass to sand out. So we're going to try to avoid that. So, All right, kids, until tomorrow. Keep dry side up.